city of Bikini Bottom and where owner Eugene Krabs and his employee SpongeBob SquarePants can be found almost every day. Sure, Eugene was a little money hungry, but I wouldn't say he was a criminal. And SpongeBob, well, he always seemed like such a nice boy. I didn't think he was capable of... It was shocking. It was a day like any other for the Krusty crew until they received a surprise visit from health inspector Andy Yellowtail. Andy would often show up to restaurants unannounced. I think it helped him to see the establishment in its natural element, but uh, I guess that could put staff on edge. Yellowtail was there to do one simple job, taste and grade every item on the Krusty Krab menu. But he didn't count on being served one item that wasn't on the menu, murder. Hoping to be rid of the inspector soon, Krabs urged his young employee to serve Yellowtail whatever he asked for. But as Squarepants prepared to make one final Krabby Patty, Krabs overheard a startling television broadcast. It was a public warning, urging the citizens to be on the lookout for a local scam artist. Krabs took more than a passing interest when he learned the nature of the suspect scams, to pose as a health inspector and get free food from local establishments. You see this kind of thing a lot when food's involved, especially when you're dealing with Krabby Patties. A fish who's down on their luck starts to think that health inspectors have a good thing going. Then they start to think, how can I game the system? Health inspector impersonation is a serious problem, but ultimately it was a coincidence. This guy had nothing to do with Andy Yellowtail. Krabs never considered coincidence as a possibility. Convinced that he had been conned, he decided to take matters into his own claws. Thinking that somebody had taken advantage of him, thinking of all that free food, well, that had to get under his exoskeleton. If you ask me, Krabs acted recklessly. Number one, it's not his place to take the law into his own claws, even if it was a scam. And two, if he just waited, contacted the proper authorities, he would have realized he had the wrong guy. But when a person's angry like that, all reason just goes out the window. As Andy was inspecting the restaurant's beverages, Krabs was convincing his impressionable young fry cook that they needed to teach this con man a lesson. I do think SpongeBob struggled with it at first. He knew it was wrong. But really, it didn't seem like it took much convincing to get him on board. The pair quietly went to work adding undesirable ingredients to Andy's sandwich, lacing it with seahorse red, toenail clippings, and even dropping it into the restaurant's public toilet. The result was the most diabolical Krabby Patty ever spawned. SpongeBob coined it the Nasty Patty. Disgusting. And he was starting to get restless. Didn't usually take him this long to get his food. In our line of work, we get served first. But that's when SpongeBob showed up to give him the patty. And he didn't know it at the time, but that patty, that was the Nasty Patty. Crabs and SquarePants retreated to the kitchen where they planned to listen to the ensuing turmoil. But for the second time that day, a television broadcast interrupted their plans. The fake inspector had been captured. BBPD already had the suspect in custody. So Crabs and Squarepants, they knew they screwed up. But I don't think they knew how badly they screwed up. In a desperate attempt to correct their mistake, Squarepants suggested they come clean and explain the situation to Andy. But when they checked on the inspector, they were horrified at what they found. A motionless Andy Yellowtail lying next to the Nasty Patty. This is an exact transcript of the conversation they had after they discovered Andy. Um, did you want me to do the voices too? Because I can totally do that. Not necessary. All right. 7.31 PM, Bikini Bottom time. SpongeBob, what are we going to do? Krabs, what's this wee stuff? You gave him the tainted patty. SpongeBob, but you told me to do it. Krabs, well, you could have talked me out of it. SpongeBob, you're right, Mr. Krabs. You're right, Mr. Krabs? Oh, well, that just goes to show you how much influence Eugene had over the kid. It was sick. In the end, he convinced SpongeBob that it was his fault. I don't think he was thinking clearly. I don't think either of them were. As the fry cook began to panic, Krabs regained his composure, hoping that if they acted fast, they could cover up the crime. After calming down a frenzied square pants, the two hatched a plan to dispose of Andy. There were no witnesses when Krabs and Squarepants arrived at Shallow Grave Road, where they dragged Andy up a muddy hill with a shovel in hand. Krabs kept a lookout as Squarepants began to dig a hole deep enough for the inspector. 
but their absence from the Krusty Krab wouldn't go unnoticed. The thing about working at such a popular restaurant was that people knew where to find you. So if you weren't there, people noticed. Around the time SquarePants was burying Andy, two would-be customers arrived at the Krusty Krab. Officer Nancy O'Malley and Officer John Slugfish of the Bikini Bottom Police Department. Finding the restaurant hauntingly empty, the two officers were forced to return to their patrol on empty stomachs. Neither of them was sure what to make of it. I mean, nothing outright tipped them off that there was any foul play, but they were definitely suspicious. I mean, why else would the restaurant be empty like that? The two officers patrolled the area on high alert for anything out of the ordinary. And sure enough, it wasn't long before they happened upon two figures lurking in the dark on the side of Shallow Grave Road. It looked like they had been arguing or something. But as soon as that flashlight came on, they stopped in their tracks. The sponge was holding a muddy shovel and shaking. But at this point, BBPD was still operating on suspicion. So they tried to keep it light, you know, tried to make them feel comfortable. And then Nancy said, why don't you put that muddy shovel in the trunk and we'll give you a ride back. Squarepants and crabs had no choice but to stow the last piece of evidence linking them to the crime in the trunk of a BBPD police boat. But the shovel would be the least of their worries. As is typical underwater, it started to rain, washing Andy out of his resting place and onto the side of the road. Unnerved, crabs distracted the officers as SpongeBob jammed the inspector in the trunk next to the shovel. Sure, they were already underwater, but now with the rain too, they were getting extra wet which means it would have been really suspicious if they had refused the ride. So they got in the boat. The sponge seemed very nervous, the kind of behavior that usually tells you to be on your guard. He was laughing a little too loudly. He would jump whenever anyone addressed him. Just something about the way he was acting was just a little off. When they got to the restaurant, SpongeBob immediately went around back to put Andy in the freezer. But he must not have been thinking clearly because they always locked the outside freezer. That was cold. If they had left it unlocked, they probably would have failed the inspection before Andy even got served. None of this would have happened. As Krabs kept Officer John and Officer Nancy busy, SpongeBob returned to the scene with Andy's body stowed under his crusty crab hat. Look, these are two of the best cops in the ocean. I mean that. But even they couldn't tell that Andy was stuffed into that hat. It was just too good a hiding spot. As SquarePants hid the inspector in the freezer, Officer John received a call on his two-way radio. It was just another piece of the puzzle. They had just come from Shallow Grave Road. They had picked up two pedestrians carrying a shovel, and now they were getting a report of two people burying someone at Shallow Grave Road. It was just too much of a coincidence. They still didn't have reasonable cause, and they certainly didn't have a warrant. So Nancy did some quick thinking. Officer Nancy requested one thing before leaving the restaurant, a small soda. When Krabs provided it, she insisted it needed ice and offered to get it herself. She was using the ice as an excuse to get to the freezer where Andy was. It was remarkable police work. As Officer Nancy quickly made her way to the freezer, the two culprits desperately tried to stop her. But as she reached the freezer door, the pair's desperation reached its peak. These two had been through a lot together that night. They were bonded by this horrible secret. But when the cops were on the verge of busting them, that's all it took to get them to turn on each other. As soon as it was clear there was no way out of this, these two sang like canaries. Overwhelmed by the sudden confession, Officer Nancy had no choice but to take action and open the freezer door in question. What she saw was something nobody expected. The freezer was completely empty. No shovel, no Andy, nothing. That's what's so strange about it. Andy had just up and vanished. Now, Eugene and SpongeBob knew that, but to the cops, they could never prove Andy was even there in the first place. Before the officers could ask any questions, the kitchen door swung open, and in its frame stood a familiar figure. Health Inspector Andy Yellowtail was alive. It was a little worse for the wear. Definitely didn't look his best, but he was OK. At that point, the suspects were definitely afraid. They weren't stupid. They understood the situation. The strongest piece of evidence BBPD would have would be Andy's testimony. Just imagine that moment. 
<laughs> the cops are like, we need some answers. And the criminals are standing there. They know it's over. They were caught. Their freedom hinged on what Andy would say. But what Andy said was not what the police or the suspects had expected. He said nothing about the nasty patty, the shovel, or being buried alive. Instead, he simply presented the Krusty Krab with a document, passing them for the health inspection. BBPD had no choice but to drop the case. I'll never understand why they let these two off the hook. Well, metaphorically, of course. SpongeBob and Eugene came really close to becoming convicts that night. I don't think that was lost on them. And they were lucky. I mean, the case was dropped. The alleged victim never confirmed any of it. So who knows what really happened? If you ask me, I believe that they're innocent. I mean, why would Yellowtail lie about it? It's tough, because there's no doubt in my mind that these two were guilty. But without any way to prove it, there's, there's nothing really that could be done. The case was closed. Think about it. This all started because Krabs thought Andy was running a scam, trying to get free food. But one thing no one ever talks about is what the police report said about the freezer. It doesn't just say Andy was missing or the shovel was missing. No, 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 it says empty. No patties, no buns, nothing. This was a restaurant. Where was all the food? It's never been confirmed what happened to all the food in the freezer, because Krabs never reported anything missing. Sure, Krabs was cheap, but at that point, he would have done anything to stay out of jail. So if this health inspector wasn't running a scheme for free food, there certainly was a lot of food missing from the Krusty Krab. Maybe it was coincidence. Or maybe Krabs, this, this penny-pinching business owner who narrowly escaped conviction, decided it was in his best interest to, to just turn a blind eye. Although the case may be closed, it leaves more questions than answers. But one thing we do know, on that stormy night in Bikini Bottom, health inspector Andy Yellowtail encountered one nasty patty. <laughs>